Lightning storms are one of the most dramatic demonstrations of nature's power, but they're not that much fun when they knock out your electricity. Luckily, the bright sparks in St. Petersburg have come up with a spectacular technology that keeps the lights on. What's up in the lab? Even as we speak, there are an estimated 2,000 lightning storms rumbling on around the world, hurling out over 100 volts per second. Each flash can produce 1 billion volts and up to 200,000 amps of current. Large thunderstorms can even generate enough energy to power the entire USA for 20 minutes. While creating some striking light shows, the potential for damage is shocking. A number of labs were set up in the Soviet Union to study the processes by which lightning forms and the factors that determine the route it takes down to Earth. The effects of lightning on aircraft, buildings and unsuspecting trees were studied to find out how best to guard against them. One of the most prominent of these labs just so happened to be in St. Petersburg and was the next stop on our trip. It may look a bit like the rear end of a giant bee, but this is in fact a lightning generator. It was built in 1937 here at the St. Petersburg Polytechnic University which carried out pioneering research in bringing electricity to the masses in the Soviet Union. And 70 years ago, it may have looked a bit like this. A burst water main in 1994 flooded the uni's high voltage research center. Then just a year later, a fire that lasted for 12 hours destroyed valuable equipment and years of research. But the history of the center wasn't extinguished. It began to spark into life again almost straight away when Russian lightning protection firm Streamer set up shop there. The company has developed a patented technology for protecting power transmission lines from thunderstorms. The lightning arrestors have proved so reliable that Streamer can count Russian railways and Gazprom amongst its regulars. As of late, power lines have started to be equipped with self-isolated supporting wires. The problem with them was that they were prone to burning out when struck by a lightning bolt. To mitigate this problem, the industry worldwide started using transient voltage suppressors. But those devices also have certain downsides when used in power lines. A direct hit by a lightning bolt would cause them to disintegrate. Contrary to the old wives' tale, lightning does strike twice in the same place. Streamers' arrestors have been tested to withstand multiple strikes without failing thanks to the company's Easy Quench technology, which converts the overvoltage from lightning strikes into plasma, creating a pretty spectacular show. Ready? Discharge. The plasma is dispersed loudly but harmlessly into the surrounding air, leaving the lines intact. The arrestor is filmed in super slow motion to see if the test was successful and the voltages and currents carefully monitored in Streamer's test center. One of these generators simulates a lightning bolt. The other one simulates a power grid. If the system is equipped with lightning arresters, such as this one here, the arresters will absorb the lightning strike instead of the insulator by providing a path of lower resistance. The electric charge travels through the multi-chamber system, which is designed to halt the development of the accompanying current as it passes through to zero. In other words, the more current there is, the more space it needs, which forces it out. Lightning strikes to power lines can cause what's known as a flashover, where the bolt arcs across the isolator, causing a devastating short circuit. Streamers and resters create a lower resistance route to zero potential than the isolator. When struck, the bolt makes its way through the Easy Quench system, which consists of a series of electrodes interspaced with arc quenching chambers surrounded in silicon rubber. It jumps from electrode to electrode, which superheats the air in the chambers, increasing pressure, causing a supersonic plasma blowout. This neutralizes the potential difference, and the power line continues working as if nothing ever happened. Needless to say, demand for a reliable power supply is high, forcing Streamer to expand, cutting the ribbon on its new factory just last year. 
The company plans to shift 212,000 units in 2014 and start mass production of new models, which may include tungsten electrodes to further boost the lifespan of the arresters. Streamer currently has six models rated to protect power lines up to 220 kilovolts, including this loop-type flashover arrestor, which can be found standing guard on over half a million pylons all over Russia. All the arrestors are produced at the company's factory and tested on site. Each device is given three jolts of electricity, but blink and you'll miss it. And as it turns out, just three strikes is more than enough. According to our calculations, the chances of our lightning arresters being hit by lightning are no more than twice in their recommended 30 years of service life, under normal climate conditions. Probability theory tells us that the same spot won't get struck by lightning more than twice in 30 years. Still, we test our arresters upwards of 10 times each, so we can guarantee that their service life will last longer than the number of lightning strikes the power line is likely to draw. One of Streamer's newer innovations combines the seemingly polar opposite conductive properties of an arrestor with the non-conductive properties of an isolator. It's designed to replace the bog-standard isolators on 35, 110 and 220 kilovolt overhead power lines and is also based around the Easy Quench system. Up to 14 of them can be chained together depending on the voltage of the line. The company has sold over 1 million of its first-generation arresters, which can be found as far afield as Brazil, Canada and China. So now it looks like we can enjoy a good old lightning storm without worrying about the lights going out.